Bear with me as we take a break from housing for a minute. The good news is we still meet our goal of discussing the most relevant topics of the day. So I've been thinking a lot about the stock market and cryptocurrency and housing and the whole economy really, just trying to make sense of it all. I recently sent a text message to some of my friends and I wondered what percentage of GameStop and Dogecoin investments were from PPP loans, unemployment, and other government stimulus. Nobody really replied, so I went about my day pondering the thought. The thought continued, started thinking about how the whole GameStop and Reddit thing happened in the first place and how it was all about the man on the street. Their dollar or dollars individually are weak, but combined together, they are strong. The Reddit group has a rally cry of sorts, which is a movie quote, apes together strong. Remember that as we move forward. They say this because they know that they can't make a real difference individually, but collectively they can. This is why a joke cryptocurrency Dogecoin can be invested into and worth more than a hundred year old iconic company like Ford in a matter of weeks. Apes together, strong. So like many of my thoughts, they just rattle around up there until something clicks and someday the good ones finally come out. Well, someday is today because I was on my buddy site the other day, MBS Highway. Not affiliate, not a commercial for them. But I was reading a really interesting post from John Malden. The post was called Tsunami Warning from the section called Thoughts from the Front Line. And wouldn't you know it, the very thoughts and questions in my head, John answered directly with supporting graphs. Eureka! First, he had me at hello with the first graph answering one of my first questions. Holy smokes, there's been $569 billion invested in the past five months versus only $452 billion in the prior 12 years. Let that sink in, guys. There's so many follow-up questions to that first graph. One pertinent question is, do we think that's sustainable? Another one would be, how and why did this happen over the past five months? We'll get to that next. John sneaks in an amazing quote, which is this, individuals buy most of the top and buy the least of the bottom. Now, I'm not a smart man, but I think you're supposed to do the opposite, buy low and sell high. John's quote is indicating that this new money may not be the smartest money. But let's get back to the how and why this happened over the past five months. Again, he answers the questions in my head, even the text I sent to my friends. Holy smokes, I can't believe I found this article. I freaking love it. Quote, where is the money coming from? The obvious answer is from the Federal Reserve and government stimulus. Then he gives us another interesting graph for historical context. Look at the cash flow compared to recent years. It's massive and mainly stimulus checks and tax refunds. He then speaks to another thought in my head about the Reddit individual traders. And remember the quote, apes together strong. Well, John points out that historically individual investors needed a larger sum of money to invest because the larger brokerage didn't want to mess with their short money. Now, that's not the case with investor vehicles like Robinhood. Anyone can trade, even young gamers. John gives us an example. Apple's around $130 a share. In the old round lot world, you would have needed $13,000 to trade it efficiently. Now you need less than a penny. This vastly expands the universe of people who can trade Apple shares. And Apple is lowly priced compared to some other popular names like Tesla around 750 or Amazon, which is well over $3,000 a share. Now, let me just read this next section verbatim because it's written so well and it wraps everything up beautifully. We have without really noticing severed the connection between share price and liquidity. This matters in ways I think we may not fully understand. Combine it with game like mobile apps that people buy and sell in individual tiny amounts and that adds up to the big numbers once reserved for giant institutions and without any kind of institutional decision making process to constrain rash moves. That's a big one. Further add trillions in government cash often to people with time on their hands because they are unemployed and who need to generate income. Of course, some turn to stock trading. It's an attractive side hustle for a time when Uber driving is less attractive. If all you have is $100, that's okay. We have raised a generation playing adrenaline charged video games for a relatively small stimulus check they can get to play in a game where Dave Portnoy assures them that stocks only go up and they can stick it to the man with GameStop. In the bigger picture, all of those small accounts add up to an enormous sum of hair triggered money. Remember, apes together strong. 
Some of it has a much higher risk tolerance. The app users don't see it as a nest egg to preserve. In their minds, it's more like buying gas to get to work, something you have to burn. The whole concept of a stock being overvalued or undervalued doesn't apply. They just want it to move. Where all this leads is uncertain, but I suspect it won't be good. Good Lord, that is interesting. And now you can see why we took a break from housing to discuss this. There's so many questions about all this that we just don't have the answers to. And as John said, where it all leads is uncertain. While none of it seems sustainable or honestly even fundamentally sound, one thing is certain, the individual investor is here to stay. Whether they make good decisions or not, apes together strong with a vehicle like Robinhood is a new dynamic that presents new challenges and new variables we've never seen before and I will not pretend to know the answers. But the takeaway is this, your gut may not always be right, but it has a really good track record. We have brains and we can spot patterns and mine said something strange is afoot at the Circle K, Ryan, you better ask more questions and proceed with caution. I'm not as smart as Barry Habib or even John Malden, but damned if I didn't ask the exact same questions he spoke to. So my gut was steering me in the right direction and my guess is that your gut is on the right track as well. Thank you to John for writing that and thank you to Barry and MBS Highway for posting that, guys. I hope you found this interesting. Let us know down below with your comments and we'll see you guys next week.